Hey everyone, welcome to A Great Alternative. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to find, harvest, prepare, and store spruce fruit. First of all, tools, what do you need? Well, if you wanted to do this with literally just one tool, a knife. Bushcraft knife will do, but any old knife is also fine. A pair of saccateurs, and specifically ones that are a bit longer because they're really easy to then get into the tight corner that you've maybe created to snip that bit of root. And then a folding saw. This isn't used to harvest the root, this is used for when you're stripping the bark. One of the methods, which I'll show later on, I do use the saw. And then a pair of gloves. Again, you don't need these. These are maybe either for comfort if you're digging around in the mud. But what I use these gloves for is it stops my hands kind of getting caught and sort of pinching my hands when I'm stripping the bark. But if you don't want to use all these, you can just use your mitts. <laughs> what trees are the best to look for? So I came across this originally from finding a fallen tree. And obviously when they fall, the roots are kind of pulled up a little bit. So I just went up to a tree and got a root off and then sort of just started playing with it and seeing how pliable it was, how strong it was. That led me into watching other YouTube videos, which I will link to at the end, and delving deeper. The reason I'm making this video is because there's some methods that I haven't personally found in other YouTube videos that I wanted to share with yourselves. So if you can find a forest like this, where it's lots and lots and lots of the same type of evergreen tree, it makes finding the roots a lot easier. But once you've found that forest, what are the best age of tree and what are you looking for? Generally, once they get older, all the branches have fallen off and then moss has started to grow underneath. Yes, you can still harvest the root. I've still found, although in other videos they can say that sometimes older trees give off woodier roots and therefore stripping and using is not so easy. I've found that it's absolutely fine the only reason I personally don't use the older trees is because you have to dig a lot deeper to get to the root. That's why I have found the best results with this age of tree. So when all of the branches haven't necessarily fallen off yet, yes, it's a bit of awkward to get into, but as you can see behind me where nothing else has started to grow other than where I'm stood right now because of the camera it's so dark in here, I've got to try and stand in a bit of light. Um, so there's a little bit of moss here, but most of it, there's not. And generally you can almost see it without even having to dig at all, where it's come up and out of the ground, whether that's over a stump, whether that's over something fallen or a rock or just an area of ground that's raised. And that is a great start because you don't have to do any digging whatsoever. But if you can't see any roots coming out of the ground like that, then what you can do is do a little bit of digging and generally close by to any of the trees, you will find a root. I've seen videos where people have used deer antlers or claws and you just kind of claw away and get that first sort of layer of mud and earth off of the root. You could use sticks or something that, that just kind of claws the root without stabbing it and snapping it, which is what you don't want. Once you've found your root, you could, I don't recommend it, it's not, I don't think this is good for the land, but you could literally just grab it and pull it up. The reason why I wouldn't do that would be you cause a lot more damage to do so and inevitably you will end up with less root because it will get snagged somewhere and you will snap it as opposed to if you slowly take the time to feel the, where the root is and maybe snip it at one end and then slowly pull it out bit by bit, freeing it up and finding the gaps and bringing all that root up. Along the way, I might generally cut off excess roots that are going from that. So if there's extra shoots, because sometimes that's a cause for splitting. Size-wise, it's totally up to you. So for different types of baskets, for the different types of end results, generally a great size is around a pencil thickness or just thinner than a pencil thickness. Remember, once you strip the bark, it will get a little bit thinner than that. Once you're getting up to kind of finger thickness, a, it's a little bit, they are harder to use, and also you're taking up a lot more of the root. So it depends on the use. I sometimes use the bigger stuff to make either handles or the outsides of a basket, and then the smaller stuff for the inside. But then sometimes I'll take the really, really, really spindly stuff to either make a tiny basket or to use to tie off something at the start of a project. Once you've collected all the root that you need to, another reason why I love this method and love this place uh, for finding the roots is that first of all, you don't notice so much when you've taken them up, but it's also much easier to put it back how you found it. So 
I would generally only take one or two roots from one area of a tree. If you're in a forest like this, you can easily do that. You take one or two roots, then you walk a five meters and you go to the next tree and then you walk another five meters and you're, you're a, lo a long way away. So you're not taking lots and lots of roots from just one area. You're taking them from lots of different areas. And then once you're finished, you try and make it to the best of your ability to try and make it that no one could tell that you've been there. Once you've got the root that you need, it's time to strip the bark off. Now, there are lots of different methods for this. They range from using your fingernail to kind of split it ever so slightly, split the bark, not the actual piece itself, and then just kind of peel it away slowly. You could find a tree stump or a tree branch and sort of rub it over the branch. You can see me rubbing it over the branch like this. <laughs> then that reveals a bit that you can slowly strip it off from there. A similar method would be finding either a log or a rock or a hard, flat, smooth surface. And then you're finding something else like another stone or a piece of wood and you just rub it off and that's how you begin Depending on the time of year, it may be easier or harder to strip the bark off of the root. So therefore, sometimes I've seen it either soaked first and then stripped or heated over a hot fire and then stripped. As far as I'm aware, between kind of May and August kind of time is the best time of year to do it. That just happens to be the time that I have done it this year and I've not had an issue so far, but I'm gonna continue doing it throughout the year and into next year to see if it, it does get more difficult as the year progresses. But personally, the ways I've used it that I've found the best for myself is just a stick. Find a stick and split it in half. Either you split it all the way down or you split it half of the way down so it's created a bit of a V and you've got that stick in your hand, you hold the root, root in one hand, the stick in the other, squeeze and pull. And then there are the other methods of the exact same thing, cutting a longer stick that you stick in the ground or another one is instead of finding that stick and sticking it in the ground, which potentially you might have to cut one down because it's, it needs to be strong so it can't be uh, too old and, and rotten, I'll find a branch that's at the right height for me, cut off some excess, leaving probably about a foot. Then I'll split from there, being very careful not to split all the way to the branch because that can be a weak point for the tree. And then it just acts as a clamp. It's like a natural kind of clamp. You put your root in, hold the end of the stick because otherwise the root can slip and shoot out the side and then just pull. Once you're finished, I then would use the saw, folding saw, to cut off right up against the tree. Obviously try not to damage the, the, the main branch, uh, the main trunk itself, but cut off that branch. So therefore I've not split all the way into the tree itself. It's only split a portion of the way and then you've left it as if the branch has just come off itself. When you're splitting, I've generally found a pencil thickness or thicker is very easy to just pull and you won't damage the root in any way. Once you get thinner than probably half the thickness of a pencil, then you need to be quite careful because I found that it can be very easy if you're squeeze, squeezing too hard or if the clamp is too tight on the root and the, the bark when you're stripping that, it can split the root. And if you don't want that, then again, just be careful and you won't split the root. For basketry or even just for general use, if you want to double the amount of, or even triple or quadruple the amount of root that you've harvested, you may want to split the root. To do this, you need to either use your fingernail or a knife to get down the middle of the root to start off that split. And then ever so slowly, you're trying to just keep that in the middle. So if the split starts to go to one side, if so, then you pull on the other side. So you remember, you're pulling on the fat side to keep the, uh, to make the other side fat, if that makes sense. Uh, that's the best way I can describe it, or I actually saw this in a video there, that's how they described it, and I thought that was quite interesting. But overall, it's just it's practice. Once you start splitting and playing with it, you'll, you'll realize how to hold and how much you can, can get away with pulling at a time to try and keep that as uniform as possible. Because if you are gonna split, that's what you want. You, you don't want to just split and then it's split off and you've got sort of lots of little scraggly bits and one bit that's fat and thin and fat and thin all the, all the way down. You want to create nice uniform pieces. I really like weaving, weaving with it as is, which is another reason why kind of pencil thickness or thinner, I like using that size because it's beautiful, easily weavable size. It can be really tightly turned and knotted or anything like that. So it's a great size to work with. So yeah, you don't have to split it at all. It's totally up to you. Once you've collected all your root, 
you take it back home, whether that's you sort of store them all, wrap them up and you can just hang it off your bag or hold it with you or just put it in a bag, whatever is easiest for you. Once you get home, I would give them a wash. The reason that I would say that you do this is purely because I've made the mistake of not doing that, storing them really closely together and then they've all started to mold. They need to be washed beforehand so there's no mud and debris and, and sort of growth medium on them already. And then when you're storing them, hang them a little bit apart so they have a bit of air movement through them to dry them without being stuck close together and having an area where moisture will keep and um, potentially cause some molding. Also where you store them, it's potentially similar to sort of storing willow or something like that. You want a bit of airflow. It wants to be dry, not too warm. So sort of something like a shed with a door open or a lean-to with enough cover that they also won't get wet as well. And then once they're dry, you can then bring them inside if you want to, and they can then be stored and you can wet them again and they will be absolutely fine. When it comes to using the root, it's absolutely fine to use it when it's fresh, it's strong, it's pliable, it's really easy to use. And normally if you uh, hang it out, it's probably good to use for about, I would say about 24 to 48 hours and then it starts to dry out so so much that it might, might need to be soaked a little bit first but when it comes to soaking it I found spruce fruit is so especially when you're at a sort of pencil thickness it's so quick and it's so easy to then be able to use it again so either leave it in a bucket of water overnight or use some warm water and it's normally ready in about an hour, half an hour to an hour. I've done some before. So overall, spruce root is an amazing resource. I love weaving with it. I've done varied projects with it so far. I find it super strong straight away. You don't have to prepare it that much to make it stronger, if that makes sense. And it's, it's beautiful once you strip the bark. It has a very unique look. It's because it's kind of gnarled and it's root, it has its own shape and it has its own character, which I love working with. And it's great to store, it's great to use and, and store and use at a later date. I've also even found that being in a forest like this, there are trees being cut down regularly by the Forestry Commission and I have taken some of the bark off of recently cut trees and then used that bark to dye the root. So therefore that's an example of potentially making more colours. It's something that I definitely want to attempt and try and experiment with later on, is then dyeing these different colours Mostly I'd like to do just natural colours, so I, you know, things that I just can get access to in nature um, rather than uh, using any kind of chemicals or anything that I've bought in from the shop. Overall, a great tool, a great resource, especially for someone if, like myself, if you don't have lots of money to spend on the weaving products and being able to buy things like willow and whatever in, almost anyone can go out to a forest like this and you can harvest your own spruce fruit and just start creating. If you have any questions or if you have any tips actually for myself, I'm a beginner. I literally have learned this over the last kind of month or so, watched lots of YouTube videos, figured some extra stuff out of my, for myself. So therefore that's why I wanna share and hopefully help out you guys. So if there's any tips that you have for harvesting roots or any tips about working with spruce root in basketry, please comment down below. If you have any questions, again, down below and also in the description I will link to the videos that helped me. Those videos came from the channels like the Sea Alaska Heritage Institute. They are the main ones, a, a brilliant kind of amazing series of videos about the basketry that they make which pff, is way above what I can do right now but well worth a watch and an attempt. Another channel, Simon, a bloke in the woods, Coal Cracker Bushcraft and the Bay St. George Micmac Cultural Revival Committee channel. So again, I'll put this in the description and so you can go and have a watch. But that's it for today, everyone. So I hope this has been useful and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.